Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and today I'm going to show you how to get the latest updates for your drivers, for your PC, laptop, etc., using Snappy Driver Installer. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, in today's video, we're going to show you how to use Snappy Driver Installer. Now, this is a really great tool, and if you're not sure where to get the drivers for your certain devices, maybe you're getting a Code 43 with your ATI or NVIDIA card, anything like that, maybe a device isn't running at its full speed, or just you want to update your system to the very latest drivers and you don't want to go hunting around all the different websites or downloading any of those kind of dodgy softwares which claim to install the drivers for you. So Snappy Driver Installer is a completely free tool, and don't be confused with other versions which are similarly named on the internet which have paid services or contain malware. Make sure you use the link in the video description or follow my instructions very carefully. Now the link you want is snappy-driver-installer.org. No other website is suitable in my personal opinion. This is the only one you should use. So let's go to the laptop and I'll show you how it works, how to use it and how simple it can be. So the first thing to do is to open up a browser. We're going to be using Chrome, but obviously you can use whichever browser you choose and just type in snappy hyphen driver installer.org and wait for the site to load. And you should have a screen which looks very similar to this. So it's done by Glenn Delahoy and basically you can donate to him if you feel it's worthy, all that kind of stuff. But essentially him and his small team are downloading all the latest drivers and putting them into specific files and packages to make life a lot easier for all of us. Now, personally, I had to use this when I was trying to get my HPC T11 up and running, which eventually failed anyway because of certain incompatibilities. So this isn't a magic tool. It will download drivers, but it isn't the fix all that some people think it might be. If there is a inherent compatibility issue between your operating system and your hardware, it's not going to get around that unfortunately but in some cases it may actually help to resolve issues so anyway let's uh, download it now now this is a portable tool so you can download it and stick it onto a usb flash drive something like that there are various versions of it there's the application only which is the one i tend to use or you can if you want to you can download the application and driver packs so there's some huge huge driver packs which are anything up to about eight gigabytes in size thereabouts and you can download it and then stick it onto like a, a larger flash drive and carry it around with you. So if you don't have connection to the internet, you can keep on keeping that updated and it's a really handy tool to have in your toolbox. But for today's uh, particular installation, we're going to go with application only. And we're going to download that to our desktop. It comes down as a zip file and it's only about six megabytes in size. So it's relatively small and quite quick to download even on slower connections. So once that's finished, we can show it in the folder and we've got our nice zip file. So all you need to do is to extract it. So right click and choose extract all. And let that go ahead and extract. And then you should have a folder that is named SDIO and then it'll be the version number that you've downloaded. Double click on that and then you've got a selection of files inside of here. So I'm gonna use the 64 bit version which is the SDIO underscore x64 underscore r716.exe. So double click on that and you will get a notification from Windows saying that it's protected your PC. Just click on more info and run anyway. And then you'll get the user account control. You won't be able to see it on here because I'm using OBS to capture the screen. But when, you can, when that comes up, just click on yes. So this is the main interface and you have to accept the licensing agreement. So just click on accept and also allow access through your firewall. So just to make life a little bit easier for downloading the packages. So as you can see on the screen, we've got loads of options here. So let's look at the ones on the left hand side, first of all. So you've got your language, automatically it goes to English and we've got the themes and we've got some expert mode options there. Also in this main welcome box, you've got the option to download all the driver packs, download network drivers only, or download indexes only. Now for most people, I would say download indexes only is probably the best thing to do to start with. So we're gonna click on that. This takes a little while. There's a 16 megabyte file, which is the main index file. Just sit and wait. Shouldn't take too long, maybe about a minute or so. Let's make this a little bit quicker. I've just gone ahead and installed my ethernet cable, just in case it tries to update the Wi-Fi and then breaks the connection. That is something you should bear in mind. So it's downloaded the indexes and it says there are updates available. 
and it's gone through and shown me all the available ones. So we've got a Bluetooth update. We've also got the AMD GPIO controller. We've got the AMD PSP10 device. There's quite a few devices in there which could be updated, which hopefully should improve performance of the device or at least make it a little bit more stable. Now what you can do is you can go into expert mode and then you can choose other drivers. So say for instance, you've got a downloaded driver from somewhere else and it's a newer driver and it's actually caused compatibility issues. You can actually go into the driver packs and you can change it to either the current driver model or an older one, etc., etc. So basically there are options there. So if you want to uh, play around with those to maybe get an older driver, you can do, but I would go with not installed and newer as being your main ones and also better match as is the default situation. So all we need to do now is select which drivers we want to do. So you can do select all if you want to do all of them. And at the top there is create a restore point. Now obviously, depending on your particular setup, if this is a mission critical PC and you're concerned and you need some way of rolling back, creating a restore point is very, very important. Also, I would suggest if you can make a backup of any important documents, because as with anything, whenever you're playing with the PC, things can go wrong. So do make a backup just in case. But once you're happy that you've got either a restore point or a backup in place, then you can go ahead and start the installation. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove create a restore point because this laptop is a kind of a device which I can wipe quite easily and start again if I need to, it's not an issue. But again, depending on your situation, choose to create a restore point or not. So we're going to go ahead and choose all of those. And all we need to do now is to click on the install button, which is really super straightforward. And it just says there, installing one of 10. So now it's going to download the drivers and it'll give you an idea of the size. So at the top at the moment it says downloaded zero bytes out of 4.53 gigabytes, which is quite a hefty download. So this will take a little while. So we'll let that current do its thing and we'll be back towards the end. Okay, so that is the drivers installed and it's gone through and done its thing. All 10 of 10 have been updated. And as you can see from the screen there, so we've got the uh, green markers, say successfully installed. And we've also got the ones which are amber, which say successfully installed, but they require a system restart. So what you can do now is you can uh, close all this down and reboot your PC and you should find that all your drivers are up to date. And hopefully any missing drivers or any odd entries in device manager should have been rectified. So that is a pretty good way of updating your drivers on your Windows 10 PC. If you've got any comments or questions, feel free to put them in the comment section below. If you want a link to the program, I'll leave that also in the video description. And please do make sure you go to the right one. There are clones of this software out there, which do have malicious software along with them. And I've given this a slightly bad reputation, but this particular version is completely clean and is perfectly fine to use. So there we go, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.